This is Wild Willie, and we're at the Arts and Crafts Show at Leisure World Clubhouse 2, and we just stopped in, and we're looking at one of the booths. Uh, hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm Annette O'Connell, and this is my mother, Julia Langevine. Hi. Uh, can you tell us uh, what group you represent? Well, I'm part of the uh, quilt club here in Leisure World. I'm also a member of the American Legion, where we're also um, raffling off a quilt for our homeless veterans. Fantastic. And can you tell us a little bit about your display here? Sure. I've been embroidering for about 15 years. I have a machine that does 10 colors. It's quite large. It's a semi-commercial uh, machine. And I buy the product and then I embroider on it. These are tote bags and the designs usually take anywhere from a half an hour to an hour to embroider. Are on. they your own designs or are they patterns? No, these are designs that I have uh, purchased. Okay, well, the I noticed this here. Uh, what is this? These are lace that we em I embroider on a plastic film and then you put it in water and it dissolves and then you have lace. And it takes, uh, this took about an hour to make, and this takes about uh, half an hour. Uh, they look like they might be uh, ornaments for a tree. That is correct, yes. Very neat. And what about behind you? We see some aprons. Yes, our aprons, uh, we, they're America-made, they're stain-resistant, and then I embellish on them with embroidery. And do you have a club here? Uh, no, we do not have an embroidery club. We might have to look into that. Oh, hi. What's your name? I'm Jean Sudbeck. Hi, Jean. Can you tell us a little bit about um, what you're doing here? Oh, I'd be glad to tell you. Several years ago, my best friend gave me this collar, and it's reversible. When I finish with fall, I'm going to go into Christmas. All I'm going to do is pull this out, reverse it, and put it into the loop in the back. And I thought, gee, I think I could make those because I love to sew. And so I started creating all of these different styles of collars, and they've gone like hotcakes. My racks are empty, and they were packed this morning. And so I got tired of that. I decided to make a little dress for my grandchild's American Girl doll. So my mother taught me to sew when I was about eight years old and to be very creative in using old clothes that were no good anymore. So that's how I started making the little doll clothes. But the jewelry is something that I just love to make. I had the opportunity to go to the Philippines and meet up with a Filipino manufacturer there. And I was able to purchase just the components and come home and just be creative and make jewelry. Oh, Jean, can I ask you, what equipment do you need to make the jewelry? Do you have equipment at home? All you need is just your dexterity and your fingers. The older you get, the worse it is. And just a pair of, of the pliers, that's it. That's all you need. The components come painted when I purchase them. And so the rest you just have to assemble. Assemble. Have an imagination and that's it. Well, thank you so much. Bye-bye. And Jenny, I like your welcome sign there. Uh, can you tell us what um, what this is? I am a watercolor and acrylic artist, and these are my works. And I live in Mutual One, and I'm having an art studio clearance this weekend. Fantastic. Uh, can you tell me, are, are you a member of a club here? I'm a part of the Art League, yes. And... Uh, have been inspired by a lot of the work done here in Leisure World and some of the amazing artists that live here. And I love participating in this fair every year. And I've met wonderful people from all different mutuals. And it's always a great weekend. They have many talented people here in Leisure World. I've got the pumpkins and the pears and I've got my new favorite Cuban lady smoking the cigar over there. I tell you, you you offer a wide variety of different types of uh, watercolors, huh? Watercolors and acrylics. And acrylics. Okay. Hi, What's your well, name? Thank you I'm so much. Cheryl Richardson. And Cheryl, what do we have here in front of us? We have handmade jewelry, everything from necklace, earrings, bracelets of all kinds, all colors, all sizes. And Cheryl, have you made uh, all these yourself? Yes. Yes, I have. Um, 
For example, this bracelet would go with these earrings. And the earrings would go with them. Uh, you'll find matching pieces. You'll find pieces that a lot of people buy Christmas gifts right now, especially right now. And so they're coming in and they're buying. It's full today. Um, do you do you make it at a club or at home? I make it at home. And I am, my place looks like a jewelry disaster. <laughs> I am full of jewelry, yes. And can I just ask you, on the average, you have so much here. Uh, how long does it take you to do an average piece? One piece doesn't take very long at all. When, when you get everything all set up, you line everything up, and then you, it's like an assembly line. You just start putting things together. If you have an, enough material for several earrings, you just line up the pieces, then you put the att attached to, and you do the twisting with all, you have special tools that you work with. It's like an assembly line. So you must have, I guess at home, then you have a lot of materials and a lot of tools. Yes. Both, yes, very much so. Okay, great. Well, have a great day here. Thank you. Oh, hi. Hey, Janice, look at this table here. This is the place to be on a hot day. Look at all these fans and everything. Wow. Hi, what's your name? My name is Lydia. And Lydia, can you tell us a little bit about your creations here? Oh, it's a watercolors and uh, it's a fan. And this fan useful for car shade sun sunshade so when you're driving car and then you put it on the uh, window and then you block the sun and then you can change the uh, sun moves very very and, good uh, the greeting cards and some candles and an oriental fan and then we have a class here Tuesday uh, 9 till 12 or 9 till 1 and what clubhouse? Uh, clubhouse number four. And uh, can anyone join your club? Sure, but uh, we all Koreans, and Korean we speak Korean. So when you speak Koreans, teacher speaks Korean too. So. Well, this might be a good opportunity for people to learn a second language. <laughs> That's a good idea when you come. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sometimes we share with the Korean food, so. Uh, you might like it. Sounds like a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Hi. Hi. Uh, can I ask your name? Sandy. And your name? Terry. And uh, I'm going to take a wild guess and say you're sisters. Yes. We are. Can you, uh, you got a really decorative uh, display here. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, we're business partners and um, we are like truly into crafts as you can see so our display this year is Christmas and um, Chevy Chic and um, we've got of course the decorations for the tables and then we've got the gifts um, the napkins which fold into a Christmas tree and then the skis which you can either put on a wall or um, display just however you like and then we have the children's aprons. We have the vintage clipboards in the back. And then of course the um, bird cages, which are real popular right now. And the, um, which are these, yes. And the, um, the lanterns, which are extremely popular right now. And then of course we've got the angels. And um, how long uh, does it take to, uh, from start to finish, to make some of these creations? Well, we've been doing this for a long time, so it just depends. For me, um, I can put a lantern or a bird gauge together in 20 minutes. That fast? Mm -hmm. Yes. That, um, I, you too? Well, it just depends if I'm interrupted or not during the time I'm doing it. <laughs> uh, do you have a lot of room at home to do all this? I don't. She does. I do. Yeah, I do. So I would pretty much work at her house most of the time. Oh, hi. Hi. Um, hi. How are you? Fine. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what you're doing here? Well, I have crochet items. I have purses and pot holders and scarves. And it keeps me busy because I just retired. Sounds
put it up like this and it, you wear it like this and it doesn't get caught in my wheels. <laughs> I've been on a cold day, it, it keeps your uh, neck warm. Very nice, very nice. It, it's nice and soft. <laughs> it sounds, seems like it, yes. And who's this lovely lady? Oh, oh, that's, that's, I thought that was somebody looking. No, that's Matilda. Matilda. Yeah, that's Matilda. Hi, Matilda. Hello. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much. Hi, what's your name? Bonnie. Hi, Bonnie, and what's your name? I'm Janine. Janine, and can you tell us a little bit about um, what's going on at this table? Um, these are gourds decorated with different different styles of burning and, and carving and such. Pine needle baskets woven. Um, it's a little bit of jewelry and crazy quilting. All kinds of fun little things I do. How do you do the gourds? Um, there's several different techniques. Some of them are just mainly painted. Others are carved. Um, these are just different. Um, I can't think of what I'm trying to say. Anyhow, they're just different techniques of working. This is um, seagrass woven onto the top of a gourd. There's one actually with pine needles as the handle. Can, can, I'm not familiar. What is a gourd? A gourd is an unedible, like the pumpkin family, only they're not edible. Okay, and... On vines. Hmm? Yeah, you clean them out and, and hollow them out and then do several different some of these are burn designs on them um, that doesn't have burning this is mainly carving interesting now you said pine needles um, wh where do you get the pine needles actually there is a tree in mutual 15 near where I live that a lot of them came from I just wherever I see pine trees I check for long needles so if anyone goes down near Mutual 15, they can look for pine needles. Yep. There's one tree that has a really nice 12 to 15 inches long. It's wonderful. Great. And I noticed something. Wait, bring your camera over here, Janice. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Those are recycled shirts and t-shirts made into, they're called Leonardo jackets for Leonardo Fibonacci which has to do with the dimensions of the squares, the patches in it. So they're recycled shirts and t-shirts? Yep. Totally repurposed. And you do all this at home? I have a two-bedroom and a patio and very little living room. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it takes most of the room in your place to do all this. But I love doing it. That's great. And it's a great show here today, isn't it? fun turnout and there's some wonderful booths here too. Okay, thank you both so much. Hi, what's your name? My name is Lucille Cook, K-O-C-H. And Lucille, I noticed uh, some uh, knitting here and I also noticed some jewelry. Do you do both? I do both. And do you do it at home or in a club? I do it at home. Can I did work for Joseph Hollywood in Burbank and they are the jewelers to the stars. They made the uh, jewelry for the movies, for TV, for about a hundred years. Fantastic. Did you meet any of the stars? Um, not really. Only the drivers that pick up for the studios. Um, to the studio people to know what they want. And I worked with them with what they wanted for the movies. And we did Cleopatra. And they did Gone with the Wind, that was before my time, but they did that, and they did all uh, hundreds of movies. Well, then you learned a lot. Now, which is your favorite between the knitting and Janice? We have right over here a lot of jewelry to look at. What is your favorite to do? Well, <clears throat> since I made jewelry for 57 years, I can solder, set, and plate, and everything. We did the whole thing. Uh, um, and I enjoyed it very much. It was more of a hobby than a job. And you do this all at home? And I uh, assemble now at home because I'm not working there anymore. 
but I do the crocheting. And I do characters from the uh, shows, character hats. We noticed that. This is very interesting. And Janice, did you get a picture of all this jewelry? Yep. Okay. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Are you having fun today? Yes, I am. Thank you. Oh, boy, Janice, I'll tell you, if you're hungry, look at all these jams and jellies and it looks like cakery, uh, bakery treats here. And Hi, what's your name? Marge. Marge McDonald. Mutual 15. Okay, Marge, and what's your name? Joni Velvick. And Marge, can you tell us a little bit about your uh, booth here? Yes, I love to fill empty jars and uh, whatever kind of fruit is in season or whatever I can find on sale. We do have a peach orchard in Apple Valley, so that started it off. But uh, we have from apple down to pomegranate today, A to P, all alphabetical order. And uh, we have salsas, we have butters, we have jams, we have jellies, we have preserves. So we just enjoy filling jars and selling them and sell most everything for 50. Can you, uh, a question I have for you. Um, what's the difference between a jelly and a preserve? A jelly is usually clear, it's just made with the juice. And a preserve is chunks of fruit. Yeah, so it's got the bits of fruit in it. Jam is usually smoother. And do you do all this at home? Yes. This house or the orchard house, whichever place I'm at. Yeah. I would think you have a big kitchen. Adequate. You just need space. <laughs> okay, thank you both so much. Thank you. Thanks for Hi, Ann Mears. And Ann, this looks like uh, ceramics and uh, some watercolors. Right, ceramics and watercolors, which I have prints and cards made from my paintings. But I take the clay crafters class here at um, Leisure World and do a lot of this art there. When does the club meet? Mondays and Fridays, 1 to 4. And can anyone join? Well, yeah, but you have to be on the waiting list. Oh, you got a lot of people wanting to get in. People, and it's lots of fun. I just love it. But everything's made by hand. Some of it's done on the wheel, but most of it's by hand. And I have seals, seals for Seal Beach. Interesting. Janice, look at the seals for Seal Beach. Right here. Wow, look at that beautiful medallion on your, uh, around your neck. I that in the lapidary class here. The lady has classes once in a while, once a month at 9 o'clock, and um, this is, was my first attempt. <laughs> You're kidding me. Oh. <laughs> glass. Pieces of glass, and then you put them in a little kiln, and they melt and form a brooch, and then you put a thing on the back of it so you can hang it. Beautiful, and did they also give you the materials? They do, yes. And what is it? Is this a fountain? It can be. It's a tower. You can put it in your garden, get a stick or a piece of rebar, and stick it in the ground and build yourself a fountain, or just a, art, a yard art. You can make it as tall as you want to. Your rebar goes. Hey, interesting. And can I ask you, do you have a favorite between watercolors and ceramics? Right now, ceramics. I did I did watercolors for a long time, and I'm kind of burned out on it. So right now, ceramics is my favorite. Okay, thank you so much for sharing. But I love them both. I love them both. Great. I can tell by your work. Thank you very much. The Arts and Crafts Show is really bringing the people in. There's a lot of excitement here today. Hi. Uh, can I get your name? Connie Postma. And Connie, can you tell us a little bit about your uh, craft shop here? Well, it's just a huge uh, array of various decorations and ornaments and wreaths and things for the holidays. 
and it looks like you make them out of just about anything. Yes, I, I actually do, with help from my grandkids. And we assemble all this and uh, put quite an array together. Sort of a family affair. That's it. Yeah, it really is. They help me out a lot. I really noticed these hats here. Janice, can we get a picture of this? Can you tell us a little bit about this? Are these for wearing or just decorating? I say they're for decorating. <laughs> I say decoration more than wearing, yes. Okay, and I'm interested in what's hanging on the wall behind you. What materials are you using for those, it looks like snowman faces? It's called deco mesh. It's a wiry ribbon that you use to make various shapes, sizes, and kinds. And I see you, are these edible foods? Oh, absolutely. That sells the best. Anything you can eat. <laughs> <laughs> Usually is the case, isn't it? And what are these made out of? That is, that is strictly a pine cone, pine cone stuffed with cotton and big eyes on it. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, and look, Janice, a paintbrush. Oh, oh my gosh, look at this one here. It looks like an ice cream cone. Oh, it's reindeer hot chocolate. How interesting. Boy, you have just about everything. Well, thank you. I have quite a bunch of different things. And are you enjoying the day here? Oh, very much so far, yes. It's been very nice. I like seeing what everybody else has made. Okay, thank What's you so name? much for sharing. Pat Swope. And the first thing I have to ask you, what is a Juposh? Juposh is the name of the company that my friends and I formed. There was three of us, Judy, Pat, and Shirley. Shirley passed away, and we didn't know what to do with the name, and then Judy said, duh, my last name starts with an H, and your last name starts with an S, so it's still Juposh. That is interesting. So J U. P-A-S-H. Very clever. And um, what are you doing here? What it, um, I should just say, what's your creation? Okay, we, we have the night lights, and we have some pins. We have little reindeer with the um, candy cane. We have angel pins. We have slippers. And we have some over here. We have candy bags. We have candy bags. You put candy in here and set him up. We have them in the Santa, the uh, pumpkin, the tree. Those could be uh, stocking stuffers. They could, yes, they are stocking stuffers. And, um, and then we've got the fish, the CD fish that we... Oh, use. look at that, Janice. And what we, this, these are fun to make because you put these up in the carport to keep the uh, birds away from your car. Hey, interesting. So it's, it's, it's fun. And how's the day going for you so far? So far, it's going very well. So. Great. Thank you for sharing. Well, thank you so very much for stopping by.